If you have a mirrorless or DSLR camera, kind of like this one, and you wanna know how do I actually use this for YouTube videos, like how do I set it up? What are the right settings? How do I make sure that I look pro in my YouTube videos, even if I'm not a pro? My name is Meredith Marsh, and in this video, I'm going to show you the exact settings that I use for a basic YouTube setup for a talking head video. I'm using a Canon mirrorless camera. This is the Canon R10, but these settings are gonna work no matter what camera you're using. It's pretty universal. Now, I don't wanna scare you with a bunch of camera jargon right off the bat, so we are going to dive into automatic mode, and then I'll share a few tricks for manual mode too, because it's not as hard as it seems. But the basic setup is the same, whether you're shooting in auto or manual. So I'm gonna get my camera set up here so that you can actually see the screen. And I wanna be very clear, this is for YouTube beginners, for getting started with creating YouTube videos with a camera. I'm only showing the basics. I'm not going through every single menu item because this is all very universal no matter what brand camera that you're using. So first of all, you wanna make sure your camera is in video mode, not photo mode. So at the top of my Canon here, you can see on my mode dial, I have it set to that little video camera there. Now, if you're using a Canon and your menu setup is similar to mine, you have shooting mode here and you wanna make sure that it is set to movie auto exposure, not the one with the M, that would be manual. You wanna make sure it's on auto and that way we have all of our automatic settings set up here. Then you're gonna tap a movie record size. So you have a few options here and these are important. This is your resolution and your frame rate. So if you're creating a basic YouTube video, a basic talking head like this, I recommend sticking with 1080. 30 frames per second. So you can see I have mine selected at FHD 29.97. And at the top, it says we're shooting in 1920 by 1080, 29.97 FPS, that's 30 frames per second. And that's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna choose okay down there at the bottom. Now if your camera shoots in 4K, which in this day and age, it probably does, you can choose to shoot in 4K if you want to. Your file sizes are gonna be a lot bigger. And depending on the speed and the ability of your computer, it may take longer for you to actually edit those videos. That's why I like to stick with 1080, especially if you're just trying to figure things out. So moving down here in the menu, you under sound recording. If you're planning on using the embedded onboard mic of your camera, that's fine, as long as you're not that far away from it. If you're away from the camera, it's gonna, it's gonna try and pick up everything. The wind, your HVAC, the dog barking down the road. So if you're re like gonna vlog where you hold the camera in front of you and it's gonna be an arm's length away, it's probably okay for that. Otherwise, you may wanna use an external mic, like I use the DJI mic, and it's, it's a wireless mic that's attached to my camera. So if you're gonna use the embedded microphone, just go ahead and put yours on auto. But if you're using an external mic, you want this to be on manual. Now I don't wanna get into every single audio setting. I do have a video for that, which I will link to down below. But depending on the mic you're using, you're gonna to wanna to plug it in, set it up, turn it on, try it out, speak in a regular voice, and then adjust the microphone settings to that. That way it's not too quiet and it's not too loud because those things are gonna be really hard to edit when you get into your editing software. It's better to record good audio when you're recording than try to edit it later. The next setting I wanna talk about is your white balance. So I tend to leave mine on auto, even if I'm shooting in manual mode, it's just always on auto white balance. I've played around with white balance a lot, especially when my walls were a different color and I decided I'm not gonna mess with this anymore. I'm just gonna let the camera do its thing. As you can see, I have some lighting in the back here. I have a window over here that has a little bit of sunlight coming in today. I have an Elgato key light behind my camera that's giving me a nice blast of light here. And then I have a lamp over here. And these are a little bit more kind of on the orangey side. I like a warmer tone for my lights. So like I said, I just keep it on auto white balance and let the camera figure it out. And I don't have to worry about what my white balance is gonna be if I set up a different light or if the sun is shining differently that day. And if this video is helpful so far, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can learn more about creating pro looking videos, even if you're not a pro. 
This is a secret that can stay between us. I'm gonna move over in the menu to autofocus. The Canon cameras that I have always used have fantastic autofocus where they focus on your face. If you move around, if you move back or forward, it stays focused on your face. If you're gonna do a talking head video, you probably want that to happen. So depending on what your camera menu looks like, you wanna make sure that you have it set to track your face. And I also have my eye detection enabled too so that it can detect my eyes. And then I want to move all the way over to the wrench menu here because there is a setting in cameras that really trips people up. It's the video system setting and there's a, a setting for NTSC and there's a setting for PAL. And if you're in the United States, you want yours to be set for NTSC. If you're in the UK, you want it to be set for PAL. If you're not sure which one you should be on, just Google it. If you do switch it to PAL, then you won't have the same frame rate options as I do. So I mentioned I like to shoot at 1080, 30 frames per second. You would have 1080, 25 frames per second. There's so many different settings here in a camera. This is just the basics. You could from here set up your shot, get it framed right, turn on your lights, get yourself in front of it, and start recording the way that it is. Things like your ISO, your shutter speed, your aperture, it's all going to set for you automatically because you're in auto mode. If you wanna take the extra step and move it into manual mode, now a lot of people get a little freaked out talking about shooting in manual mode. And if you're thinking like a photographer or if you've ever learned about photography shooting in manual mode, it's a lot more complicated for photography than it is for video, especially if you're shooting a talking head video in your space and you don't really have to change many of the settings once they're set up. So in my menu over here up in the top, I'm going to tap that little video camera and I'm going to choose the video camera with the M next to it. And that's going to give us a few more settings to work with here inside of the video manual mode. Welcome to the dark side. I'm just kidding, it's really not that complicated. Everything we just talked about stays the same. Resolution, frame rate, sound recording, white balance, autofocus, NTSC versus PAL. But now, as you can see here at the bottom of our touchscreen, we have the ability to change things like the shutter speed, the f-stop or aperture, and the ISO. Plus, you have this handy meter down here that tells you if you're properly exposed or not. Now, I think the best way for me to show you this in real time is to record myself and my camera settings so you can see what this actually looks like for a talking head video. All right, so you should be able to see me here. Now, I'm using a different camera than the one I was showing you, and this is my main setup. So this is a Canon M50 Mark II. I have a Sigma 16 millimeter lens here. It's a little bit of a fancy lens. It's not super expensive, but I'll explain why I use that instead of the lens that comes with my camera in just a minute. You can see my exposure meter here. So you can see it's right there in the middle. So everything is perfectly exposed the way that it is. Of course it is. I've set this up to record a YouTube video. So how do we get there? So right here we have our shutter speed. Your shutter speed should be basically double your frame rate. So you have 1 60th. We have 30 frames per second. So 30 doubled is 60, so it's 1 60th. Easy peasy. Now this next number over here is your f-stop or your aperture. And this can get a little bit confusing because it depends on the lens that you're using and not so much on your camera. So the lens I'm using here, the Sigma lens, goes down to an f1.4, which is pretty low. And the R10 that I had out just a few minutes ago only goes down to a 3.5. So if you're using a camera that you just bought off of Amazon or Walmart or wherever, and it just has the lens that came with the camera, it probably only goes down to 3.5 or maybe even 4.5. Why does this matter? There's a big difference between say an f-stop of 1.4 and an f-stop of say 4.4 and it has to do with light and focus. So the lower the number, the more light can come into your camera. Light is what allows a camera to 
be a camera. It needs lots and lots of light to make the image and, and actually do its thing. So particularly in a space where you're at home and you don't have a lot of room for a bunch of studio lights, and you don't have a big budget for studio lights, having a lens that can go to those lower f-stops is really, really helpful. The other thing that the f-stop does is changes your focus. So a lot of people ask, how do I get a blurry background? They're using their phone or they're using their camera with the lens that came with it and they want their background to be blurry. And I don't blame you. I love, I love a blurry background. I always like to say, if I can read the books behind you, then you're either too close to your background or you need to adjust your f-stop. So because I record here in my tiny office, I want to create as much depth as possible because these shelves are right behind me. I can touch them, but yet they're nice and blurry behind me. So they look like I have a little bit more depth and the way that that's happening is because I have a lens that goes down. Now I'm at 2.0 here. If I were to go all the way down to 1.4, that's a little bit too low. The reason I know that is because it can probably uh, focus on my nose but my hair and my shoulder and stuff will be out of focus. So I want my whole body to be in focus. So I like to be sitting right around two usually. It's going to depend on how much light you have, what's going on in your background, how blurry you want it to be, and the capability of the lens that you have, again, for a talking head style video. The last number that you're going to adjust, the last part of the exposure triangle, as they say, is your ISO. This controls how sensitive your camera is to light. And I almost always have mine set to auto. And sometimes the exposure will fluctuate in my videos. The thing is, remember, we're talking about how to look pro on camera without actually being a pro. If I was actually a pro, I would black out my, my window so that I could completely control the lighting situation in this room. The problem with that is I'm not a vampire. I like to have a little bit of natural light. This isn't just a studio. This is my actual office where I spend most of my day. So I'm not gonna black out my window. That's why I keep it on auto. If the sun moves, if the clouds move, I let the camera just kind of like do its thing. But usually I would be down here around uh, like 125-ish. If I went any higher than that, like I'm at 160 right here, it's probably a little too far. No, it's right in the center there. Eh, depends where I'm at in the frame, I guess. So I'll just bring this back down to auto and we'll see where the camera puts it. Is this making sense? Your shutter speed doesn't change. Your f-stop depends on your lighting and your whole setup situation. And then the ISO is the very last thing. You really want it to be the lowest number that you can to have the cleanest, clearest image. So try to be under like 400, under like 600. If you get around to like eight or 1200, then you might wanna start thinking about getting some external lighting sources or moving closer to a window. Remember, your camera needs to have that light in order to work and like do its thing and work its magic. So now you know how to create pro looking videos without actually being a pro so you can grow your YouTube channel, look legit. And if you're wondering about how to actually build your profitable YouTube channel without spending forever. I set up a series over here for you on how to do exactly that using the same systems and processes that I use myself and that I teach my clients and students.